in the fall of 2021 is when that elk, uh, again, during the rut, uh, lost its inhibitions and started hanging out with groups of cows during the rut. And we were able to kind of pattern that animal and, and figure out where it was going in the mornings and evenings with the help of sightings from uh, homeowners. And everything just worked out the night that we were able to tranquilize this elk. Um, our other officer, Dawson Swanson, was able to uh, sneak within range and was able to make a good shot with his tranquilizer gun and uh, that animal went and, and bedded down. Uh, this elk was certainly not in bad body condition. He was healthy and strong and fat. Um, so in that regard, he was in good shape. So we certainly could have uh, cut the tire off and, and that was our first attempt to do so. Uh, we were some distance from our vehicles where many of our tools were stored. And we expected that we might be able to try and uh, cut the tire off with the use of a Sawzall and that's what we tried. And, Unfortunately, once you get to the steel, steel uh, bead, um, you know, it was really slow going as far as cutting through that. And one of the considerations is that this animal's under anesthesia, right? It's under drug influence. And so one of our concerns is the health and overall, um, you know, safety of that animal. And so to make this more expedient, we ended up just cutting the antlers off, pulling the tire up over its head. These antlers fall off every spring. Um, and so really by cutting the antlers off now doesn't pose any sort of long-term um, you know, negative impact to this elk. Uh, these animals will grow another set of antlers next year and uh, he will you know, function just perfectly next year um, and go on and live a, a perfect and healthy life. There's a few reasons that we'll cut the antlers off as well. One, it's a safety consideration for us. If this animal would have gotten up and kind of pushed through the, the sleepiness of the trank drug, um, we could potentially get injured. And we've had people that have gotten uh, you know, knocked over by elk or deer with antlers. And so a lot of times from a safety standpoint, we'll cut the antlers off. Um, and then also, whenever we drug animals, uh, we also like to deter people from shooting that particular animal. In the fall, we have hunting season, and uh, this animal certainly could wander into an area where legal hunting would take place. And because he doesn't have antlers, it's a less likelihood that he would get shot. And if they, those animals have drug in their system, um, that meat is not uh, able to be consumed uh, for approximately two weeks. And so, uh, once that drug gets out of that system, uh, then that animal, um, you know, is, is fully safe to be consumed. When I first saw this elk, it was kind of shocking of, of how exactly does an animal like this get a tire around its neck. Uh, bull elk, for the most part, uh, most of the year have antlers growing or, or developed on their head. And so there's really a, just a narrow window that this animal could have got this tire on its head, either as a very young animal or during the winter and springtime when they lose their antlers and, and don't have any. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of a perfect storm for this animal to get this around its neck. More commonly, what we end up with is animals that get things tangled in their antlers, uh, netting or, um, you know, pieces of, of fence or wire stuff like that is pretty common for these animals to get caught in their antlers because they're using their antlers uh, to both fight and then to rake trees um, you know during the breeding season and so for something to get around its neck it was it was pretty wild and then we just didn't know one how it actually got that way we have a few theories uh, my probably most likely situation is that this could have been a tire swing um, and that elk just curiously put its head through a tire swing. Um, or another theory is that this elk could have been um, being illegally fed and happened to stick its head through a tire that somebody was using as like a feed dish or, or something where they're putting food inside of a tire. Um, no telling exactly how this happened. Uh, we certainly see weird uh, situations where animals get things caught around their heads um, in other other times and so um, you know animals do weird things and it's just 
a mystery we'll probably never know. One of the big risks is that once he got to be full grown and full sized, that his neck would have filled the entire tire and potentially restricted uh, blood flow or uh, breathing issues. And so that would have, have caused potential issues. Or if animals are fighting together, uh, this animal, you know, another elk could have gotten an antler caught uh, in that tire and potentially cause damage to, um, you know, the elk with the tire. Uh, or if you get two animals that are tied together, it could result in both of those animals dying.